Hey, my colleague, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Top cool. quality affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbuddingbiker.com for slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Announcement I told you. All right, guys. Uh, this is the Lab 2021 Ride and Meetup event. It is going to be for our beloved patron members. Here's the qualifications. It's going to occur on Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. Basically plan your day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's the kind of the window. Uh, we'll meet um, for the ride in and around the Placerville, California area, okay? Um, that's all you need to know right now. In the morning, of course. And then we will lead you uh, to a location where we will have a late afternoon dinner and social event. We've been doing these for years. This one's going to be awesome, just like they always are. You must be a patron member of Law Abiding Biker Media, mid-level or above, prior to March 29th, 2021. That's three months prior to the event, so we know you're a committed patron vet member. It gives us time to vet you uh, to make sure we can get you in the event. All right, the deadline for sign-up is May 1st, 2021 at midnight. All right, no exceptions for the deadline, guys. These are big events. We got to plan them. Um, so make sure you hit that deadline. Um, and uh, of course, if you need lodging, you can get lodging wherever you want, in or around the Sacramento, California or Placerville, California area hotel. You'll be just fine. We'll give you further details for all those that are actually vetted and going to attend. The official sign-up is only one place. Again, you got to be at that mid-level patron member. Um, if you're new to the chat and our live broadcasts, uh, I will put a link later in the description below um, to sign up as a patron member if it's something you're interested in um, and you get access to events and a whole bunch of other stuff. The official sign up for you, for you members, is lawbindingbiker.com forward slash 2021 meetup. All one word, 2021, the number 2021 meetup. All right. Now, here, you'll get a week. Once you sign up, you'll get a welcome email. Um, once you get that welcome email, make sure to look for a second email, uh, which is is an email opt-in. I need you on that email list because that's how I'm going to give you exact details of the meetup and exactly where to go as we approach that. It may end up in your email junk spam folder. You must check that. You must confirm opt into that email list. We got to have you there. And uh, the event is, uh, we got a lot of attendees. It's going to be awesome. I already am planning a place and I, we're, it's going to be catered. It's going to be awesome. And most of all, we just get to meet you all in person. So again, uh, get signed up and I'll link to this later, but you can always go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N if you're new and you want to get signed up as a contributing and beloved member. And we do have a bunch of patron members in the live chat right now. Want to ride longer? Tired of a sore and achy ass? Nobody likes a sore ass lurch. Oh, or, no. or an achy no, ass. No, not at all. There's multiple reasons you could have a sore and achy ass. We're not going to go down that trail right now. We're just going to say then fix it with a high quality butt buffer seat cushion. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com for slash store and check out our lineup of butt buffer seat cushions. Mm. So I had a real quick, I had a HVAC guy come over because we're looking at another, what do they call them? Mini split? Mini split. Mini split. Heating and air conditioning unit. Yeah. Duckless. Duckless. There you go. Duckless. Yeah. Anyways, he comes over. It was really cool. I don't know who he is. I called the company. His name is Devery, all right? And he works for a local company here around us. He came over one morning. He's looking at, at the mini split. It's making a noise. And uh, he, he uh, uh, disclosed to me, which uh, was awesome. He said, hey, by the way, I love watching all your videos and listening to your podcast, bro. I just want to know. He didn't even know. He goes, I thought... I knew it when I got the name on the ticket. And he and so he knew before he got here, he goes, that's got to be the same um, Ryan Erlacher. So it was really cool. I love meeting people like that. And because he was here, I said, well, then we're going for a 
studio tour. And so I gave him, we got talking about motorcycles and I just love meeting bikers. That's why we do what we do. And it was really cool that he disclosed to me that he was a follower and uh, was getting, he had just watched one of my documentary films and said he just loved it. So thank you, Devery. That was really cool. Oh yeah, once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up now. Big Daddy Kane has a little something special for us. Yes, I do have something very special for you. Um, you know, right now we're we're dealing with a lot of hurt and pain and all these different things going on in the world. And sometimes all we need is some love. So uh, this song's by Jamie Johnson, and I thought it was the perfect example of love. Women can't live with him, and somehow you can't ever live without. Women can't understand him, but trying to is what makes the world go round. I've made a sad one laugh. I've made a good one cry. I've made one scream my name to the good Lord by and by. <laughs> I've made him go insane. I've made him go away. Just can't ever seem to make one stay. Women, they're all crazy. Some hide it well, and some just let it show. <laughs> Nicely done, Big Daddy Kane. Always got a you, rhyme for us. Did you practice that? Were you singing in the shower, kind of getting it all laid out? No, not that one. That, no? that okay. was a CD that was playing in my old Subaru on the way up here because we still got some snow and ice. And I was like, that's a perfect love song for the COVID time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see you uh, in the shower practicing that, practicing mm-hmm. that while mm-hmm. he's rubbing one out. Oh, <laughs> why can you see him doing that, you weirdo? One for me. Why are you even thinking know. about that? I don't know. Yeah, there's a reason why he put cameras in the stores. <laughs> yeah, he just watches you, doesn't he? he I that. do. Oh, I saw Cindy's, Cindy's like, he's watching us. I know. <laughs> I go, no, it only comes on when you enter and it's exit. true. It just shows who came in and came out. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome, bro. All right, let's do this thing, guys. Oh, yeah, we got a big audience tonight. The chat's blowing up. I don't know what to do, guys. Oh, thanks for being here. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99% large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history. That's right. By being here, by listening, by watching, you're part of what we call hashtag that. biker revolution. Nice, nicely done. Uh, we do have just one question before we get started. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Mount up and let us take you on another wild-ass ride. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your high-tech redneck. There you go. That is right, guys. We got him right here. Mm-hmm. You heard him, Big Daddy. Hey, pretty woman, looking like a dream. I'd love to get with and make you scream. But I can tell by the way you look, you ain't looking for love. Just a gold-digging mama, so I'll use a glove. <laughs> <laughs> and he writes yeah, these things. He does. He writes yeah, these he, people. He, he doesn't make this. You know, he he, he make, makes it up himself. He's not copying anybody. He's a, he's the uh, he's smooth a, operator, yes. man. And uh, Big Daddy, we love having him on. Thanks for being up here, of course. And uh, of course, oh, here. <laughs> Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I wanted to do it. There you go. Oh, that's Ooh, awesome. Of course, Lurch. I headed on that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a long one, dude. Yeah. Lurch in the house, Big Daddy. That's right. Main topic today is going to be the new Harley 2021 model lineup, because I did write 2020, and I caught myself, Lurch. Mm, the new 2021 model lineup. Um, we're going to dive deep. It's just, this is bikers talking biker stuff, guys. Now, let me preface this episode by this very quick. Um, normally, of course, we do the regular podcast. They come out every 10 days. Um, those are available to everybody. Of course, we do the YouTube videos. That's available to everybody. But I will tell you, and the patron members in the chat right now can tell you that by and far 95% of our live video broadcast with chat like this are exclusive to our patron members. We like to treat them well. They fight, they, they support us financially and we do these events for them. And then, so what you're seeing today, we are going to do these now and then we want to give the, the regular audience a taste of kind of what we do. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun in chat. 
but the only way to access these most of the time is to sign up as a mid-level or above patron members. It assures we can continue to help as many bikers as we can worldwide to help educate, entertain, inspire, and all that. It's really the way we've grown as a media company over the past years. Of course, we have the store. We do some other stuff, of course, sell videos. Those are big parts of it. But really, the patron members have kind of been a steady backbone. So you're getting this. If you're new, have fun. Enjoy the chat. We'll try to monitor it. But we're just a bunch of bikers trying to help bikers and having conversations. We've been filming new videos all day. Um, those will all come out on the YouTube channel. We're always filming and stuff's always an edit. And we just have this flow of content, um, both podcasts and the videos. Of course, Big Daddy, uh, he right here is the uh, store operations manager and lawabidingbagger.com forward slash store. He's the guy that's in charge down there and shipping stuff out and, and goat works down there with them. So we're going to have fun, but I just wanted to tell you that this is uh, we will do a few of these in 2021, but by far 95% of it are exclusive. Uh, we really, really, that's how much we appreciate our patron members. They also get a bunch of other benefits. We'll talk about that in a bit. Speaking of documentary films, we have a lot of documentary films that are free on YouTube. Usually, we I, I make them, and uh, once they're produced and and out, they go for sale for a year, so to speak, um, for all those that want to buy them. But they always end up hitting the YouTube channel eventually, and I've got a bunch of free ones out. So lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride dash now is how you get those films. If you want to see all my documentary films, including for purchase ones, which there are one new one and another one that are technically for purchase right now. My newest one, of course, if you follow, is um, it's the trailer. Uh, it is for sale right now. It will come out on YouTube eventually. But if you want to support me um, and so much time and effort trying to entertain and inspire bikers, um, I think it's a very reasonable price. And you can go over, you can see the trailer on YouTube or just go to that lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride dash now. You can see the trailer. And of course, if you want to purchase for that small fee, you can purchase it and uh, hopefully be entertained, inspired people. It's getting nothing but rave reviews. It's definitely my biggest documentary ever. Um, but uh, uh, if you want to go directly to it, just lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Sturgis dash 2020 dash documentary. But again, anytime ride dash now, we'll get them to you all. And even those trailers blowing up and, uh, I, I, I just know from the feedback that people that have purchased it are just, uh, uh raving about it. And I thank you so much. Um, cause I put so much, so much, I'm not going to explain, um, how much we, it, it takes to make one of those, but, uh, there you go. So, as we dive in to the 2020 model lineup, I did a video on that too. Um, it's out on YouTube. We're going to get in a little bit deeper here. That's what the podcast is for, to get in deeper. Um, uh, we have to kind of make the YouTube videos a lot snappier. But if you want to see the YouTube video, it is out on the channel. And to just, just search, look around. It's one of the most recent. All right. So, you know, we love our sponsors up front and all that kind of fun stuff. But these people are also sponsors. These are some of our newest patron members. Yes, we have Chris Foster of Mansfield, Ohio, who's top tier. We have Michael Moreno of Shelby Township, Michigan. Ed Ganton of Sparks, Nevada. Ronald Essinger of Ber Bernio, New Mexico. Roy Brand of Dallas, Oregon. And Jason Berard of Boise City, Louisiana. And then we have uh, Martin Mitchell of Cooper Fife, Great Britain, top tier. Diego Ivan Martirina of Chicago, Illinois, who's top tier. And of course, Josh Clausen of Lincoln, Nebraska. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon, P A T R E O N. Pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t shirts and stickers. Access to the private Facebook group, which is the one of the best forums around. It is a troll free zone. Nothing but bikers helping bikers in there. Access to our uh, live video broadcast and chat like this. Podcasts early. Access to our premium videos up on request for your top tier. And access to those ride, meetup, and events. Always blowing up the benefits for our patron members. So there we go. Thank you to those new patrons. Let's dive in to the 20. We're going to talk about the virtual event, which was the, let's talk about that, which was the first virtual event. Um, that Harley Davidson has ever done. And I just want to say welcome to 1990 Harley Davidson. Very well done. <laughs> oh, we should give him a clap. There you go. I've been waiting for it. I hope that it's not just because of COVID. 
Um, and let me let me give you my opinion on that. The reason being is, if you look at other industries, the motorcycle industry is so far behind when it comes to this. If you look at things like Apple, for example, uh, there's a whole bunch. Uh, DJI, if you're into drones and stuff like that, a lot of these tech companies figured this shit out like ten years ago, where they put out a virtual event, they build suspense leading up to it. It, they, you know, uh, the regular public before Harley's been always so close to the public. They're like here, right? And we love Harley here. So if you're new to the channel, uh, we are we aren't affiliated with Harley. We don't own a dealership. Um, we're we, none of that. They don't pay us. We're not sponsored. So because of that, we love Harleys. We love our Harleys. I have three of them sitting out there. My police bike is a Harley. I also will be very critical of them, and that's why this channel is actually very fair and open because we aren't affiliated with them at all. Um, so we will be critical of them, but they've always been really close. Like they're up here in my opinion. And then they kind of just look down on their customers. This is a way, like I say, Apple's been doing it, DJI to build suspense. You all could, if you didn't know, you could have viewed the virtual event. I viewed it as a public member. Um, before it was just the dealerships, all these dealership owners and, 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 uh, uh, you know, whoever the, the who's who of Harley, and could go to these events in person, but they didn't invite the regular public and stuff. And that's a real put off to me, to your customers. So I'm glad to see that they're like, yeah, that's the people that actually pay us right over there. Like they have the money that, yeah, it's not your, you know, it's cool if you want to take your dealership. So I'm hoping it's something that they keep doing. I think it was very effective. I'm going to dog it a little bit, but it was effective. And I think they need to get, um, um, they, my only thing would be they need to get some bikes out to different people. I think before the event to build a little bit more suspense, you can do some non-disclosure type stuff. Apple does it. Let me just say Apple is one. They throw out new stuff, new Macs, iPhones to like two weeks before. Same with DJI to influencers and things like that. But they have a non-disclosure. They make a video. They have two weeks to make their video. They can't release it until a certain time. It just builds a lot of suspense um, and, and things like that. And I think it gets the audience involved um, with whoever, whoever they may follow uh, online in that particular niche. So um, what do you guys think about the, did you, either of you, were you able to, I watched it. Uh, before we get into that, we, yep. you, you already mentioned that this is uh, open to all of YouTube right now, not just patron members. So we are monitoring the chat. If there's some chat that's less than um, professional, we'll put you in timeout or delete you if we have to. Yep. Yep. Also Terry uh, is, I, I'm going to say it wrong. McDonough. McDonough, McDonough, McDonough. Yeah, he mm. was saying sporting a new look there, Ryan. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, bro. Because me and Terry talked about this. Terry, um, eventually you're going to see a documentary. He's a patron member. I've already filmed everything. Um, he came up here twice. I went to Oregon once. Um, I have a lot of film. Eventually, uh, when I get time, I will. There'll be a documentary, but we were talking about that, and he, I uh, because I kept telling my we, both of us mm -hmm. we were trying to do stuff and read stuff, and I was trying to operate my cameras, and I'm like bitching about my glasses, and uh, I've wore glasses. I'll tell you for several years. Lurch told me to wear them today. The video I did for the first time today, I have my glasses I, on. I encourage you. That's you what did. I'm here for, buddy. Because yeah. I always took them off. I don't I'm know the why. the wind beneath your wings. You are. You really inspire me, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that very much. But uh, so, yeah, it is. I, I just, you know, at some point, I just have to realize that I'm old. I just need them for reading. They're just reading glasses, but it's getting really hard, people. And uh, uh, so I'd always take them off when I did videos and stuff. And then in between <laughs> takes, I would have to read my notes and then I would take them back off. And so I'm just, I got to just give up. I got to give up. So you guys, the first time we're seeing me in my, call me four eyes or whatever people call well, you. Here's a glasses, comment that says, he looks like the dude from Mythbusters. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, and he, maybe he was even talking about the old oh, yeah. goatee, bro. You're, you're sporting a goat these days. Because I got glasses and I'm sporting the uh, goatee. Our uh, policies at work at the paying job got loosened up a little bit so we can uh, have a little. It's white. I please, uh, Lurch called it gray and I prefer to call it it's white. It's more distinguished than, than saying it's gray. Lurch. All right. So I got two new looks going on. Yeah. All right. So yes, we are monitoring the chat. So uh Let's see. I can't. Oh yeah. See, here's a, here's a guy in here. The thing is, uh, some of these, we're going to get kind of some weirdos popping in here and there, but the thing is 
he, his comments already been banned because I have all kinds of filters set up. So um, yeah, you just get a few haters in here, but we just, you're deleted. Okay. And it doesn't go through anyway. So um, yeah, thanks for being here, all you awesome bikers, but uh, we'll be deleting those. It's real simple. You're deleted. You're canceled, even though I don't like to cancel people, but those people get canceled right yeah. here on the channel, bro. Just keep the chat respectful. Yeah. It's all we ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're not going to offend us. Trust us. Yeah. You, you can't offend us, man. We, we've been around here doing this a long time. So let's dive into the old uh, uh, virtual event. So I do think it was a good idea. And uh, all in all, uh, and I'm glad they did it. And I hope they continue to, to, to do it. I, I, I really do. Some people didn't like it. I think it was a, maybe a little bit boring. I still think it's better than the old way they did it. So let's dive. I, I asked you, but you didn't answer. Did you, either of you get to see that? I did not, no. How about you guys in the comment? Did you guys, uh, anybody in there get to, uh, uh, knew about it, number one? And did you, show, uh, throw it out in the comments, did you... Uh, uh, like it. Did you like it? And did you get to see it? And we'll see if we can roll through some of those. Ricky? You there? Yeah. I'm oh. looking up an order for a customer <laughs> who says he didn't get Oh, no. <laughs> We're doing that in the chat? Seriously? Yeah. Well, oh. I actually show it's already been delivered. So okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, that happens. Your post office, Yeah, you'll have to go. But Ricky will help you out. Email him. Uh, he, he runs the store. He'll help you out with that. That happens sometimes the post office just loses them or they get stuck in purgatory at the post office. That's just normal package stuff. Heck, that's happened to me on a few Amazon packages. It just happened to us. We tried to order something for the kid and then it got stuck uh, somewhere and we could never figure it out. So uh, yeah, th those things happen with shipping. All right. So as we're moving on here, because we got a lot of content here. Um, so uh, I, I guess I didn't get your answer. Did you watch it live, Rick, for the third time? No, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I had it on the calendar and then uh, had something come up at work that kind of took me away from taking a quick break to watch some of it. Gotcha. I watched some of the the uh, highlights afterwards, though. And I think, you know, considering the COVID times, it was, it was a good uh, applicable try at doing something with it. Far better than the previous years. Yep. yep. There's a few people that says, yeah, I saw it. Thought it was okay. Not overly impressed. Uh, saw mm -hmm. it, watching the engineers and designers read from a teleprompter was painful. Throw some of those names out there. Uh, Michael Peer was the last comment. Gotcha. Uh, the military biker was the first uh, comment. And this one is Dan. Sorry, I'm going to destroy this. Veramina saw it, but I still felt they forgot about their core supporters. So mm, well said. Yeah. Uh, Carl here said, I like the parts with the employees showing what they worked on. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that's cool to expose who Harley really is, right? Like I said, they've always been so closed off, so closed off to the regular audience. And that's something they took directly from some of those tech companies that I just talked about. Those were just a couple companies I named. Um, they have the employees or, or heads of divisions come up, you know, instead of just, it seems less talking down to you than, and we want to see who works behind the scenes. And I think that's really cool. So thanks for those comments. So uh, Jochen Zeitz, who is the CEO right now of it, opened it up. Um, they did it at the museum in Milwaukee. Uh, I think it had some great shots. Uh, it was really neat um, to you know see the background and all the bikes. And he's walking through the museum and uh, talking about some things, which we will talk in here now. Um, th now they had the old, let's see. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Uh so yeah, it opened with a highly produced video, of course. Yakin takes over, and then he hands it off to Jason Momoa. Of course. Aquaman. Jesus, that guy's everywhere right now with Harley. Dude, I know. He's and a, I just, and we're not going to go down this he's too. A, he's a big motorcycle fan in general. He's He loves music. He collects guitars. Um, he collects several Harleys. I see why they chose him because of the amount of, I do too. that he is involved in that. And I just don't think it helps, I, but I get why they chose it. But I don't think it necessarily hurts. It may not, these, our followers may or may not like that, but when you're looking at a major company like that, that's kind of the score of normal advertising and promotion. That's the problem though, it, right? It is, but I don't blame that on him. Because Apple's not, no, I don't blame it on yeah. him at all. I totally, I, good comments. I appreciate that conversation. I agree with you hundred percent. I get it. I get why they picked him. I know that he works on some rat rod hardies. I don't think he's really touring cross country, quite honestly. Um, but I get it. My problem with it is, is that it's kind of old way to advertise. You don't see big companies like I just mentioned, the aforementioned tech companies. They don't do that. Mm -mm. The reason is they realize they get more bang for their buck 
going out to where their audience actually is these days, which is influencers. And they aren't, they don't care that, that Aquaman has an iPhone. They care that the guy that reviews iPhones and has a huge following has the iPhone. So they kind of have, again, Hardy's like 10 years behind. This is the way we used to do it. Honestly, my opinion, their core audience doesn't care that Aquaman, he's, they're not going to yeah. buy a bike because yeah. Aquaman says buy a Harley, you know? Um, yeah. But, and that's, that's, we're yeah. right in line with that. We've spoken about that off mic before. And I totally agree with you on that. I just think that, um, you know, the highlights that I saw, I think it was better than last year, but I, Jason for me doesn't negative or positive towards me. I don't care. Do you find uh, him sexy? No, not necessarily, but I find his wife. <laughs> Liar. I find Liar. Him, I find his wife very hot, though. Who's his wife? I'm going to Google it right now. Oh, you guys yeah. I don't follow these I people. I know who it is. Okay. But uh, she used to be on the Cosby show, and she was mm. married to Lenny Kravitz for a while. Mm. Oh, yes. Lisa Bonet. Yeah. Oh. Okay. See, I would. I didn't even know he's married. Um, I don't know much about the guy other than he's Aquaman. Anyways, that's my point. I'm not dogging on him. I get why they did it. If, if you're going to do that kind of marketing, but the money they spent on him, I can only imagine they could have got so much more bang for their buck going out to their actual communities and they would have spent less honestly and got more traction out of it. Again, I've dwelled on it in the past. I just think it's horrible that they're stuck in the old marketing days. That's what he, people used to do, right? Is you hire the Hollywood actor and they say how cool your shit is and people buy it, right? And that's just not, with all of the platforms we have now, um, I just don't think that's really how people are connecting with a brand. I don't think that's making a connection. Maybe with some of the younger writers, uh, I can I can get it. I could be full of crap. I don't know. We're just bikers uh, shooting the breeze here. So thank you, Rick, uh, for uh, bringing up some of those points. Uh, and I think we're mostly obviously in agreement on that. So, but he only stands in front of a Christmas tree for like 15 seconds, says this thing about how excited he is, all that. Um, and then he hands it back off to Yakin, who was interesting. It's one of the first times we've heard from Harley um, actually talk directly to its customers um, again. And, and Yakin mentioned that Harley is, quote, there for us now um, and has listened, listened to and worked hard to prioritize the things that matter to the customers. This is something, again, it's this disconnect. And so it seems like at least mentally, as a CEO, he's aware of it and trying to change their brand and their approach towards their customer base. Lurch, anything on that? No. Okay. Sorry, I was just nodding my head in agreement listening to you. Well, I just, you know me. Yeah. I got to try to turn it over to you guys now. Otherwise, I'll just keep yakking. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll see if that, we'll see if what he said is true. Um, obviously, as we move forward into the future, if they really are going to listen a little bit more and not be so standoffish. Again, that will be determined a lot by whether they do the virtual events and all that kind of stuff. So, and if you haven't listened uh, to the podcast, check it out. Um, oh, I don't even know what episode number it is. We talk about many subjects like, oh yeah, yeah. So just in general, we talk about subjects like this and a whole bunch more, um, obviously on our podcast guys, as we break it down. So Yakin talks about a few more things in this deal and then he uh, ties it up. He says um, they're going to, uh, he talks about some new, and you guys have seen it probably by now, but some new limited edition paint sets um, under what they call the enthusiast collection. Um, he says how Hardy has really come alive this year. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I think they are alive. I don't know if they've come alive, but uh, um, especially as we dive in here in a minute, to some of the models and kind of we're going to break it down to what you really, really need to know in case you don't. And I certainly want to see your comments in there guys. So um, then he throws a teaser. All right. About, and we just talked about this before where we're eating some pizza before we went live here, he throws a teaser about how they, uh, they can't talk about it right now. Um, but, uh, uh, and I think it was about the Pan America, basically uh, the Pan America, which at the end they do. And that event is coming up. We'll talk about that. Okay. So if you haven't seen one of these live events, they're going to do another one on the Pan America. Um, but we will get to that in a little bit. So was the uh, quality better than their HD TV? It was, yeah. but it was, uh, in my opinion, I say this lightly. I don't even know how to say it really. I feel like, I just feel like they would have got so much more out of, sometimes they overly produce things to the point where it doesn't really, feel okay. genuine. 
You see what I'm saying? Right. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm a video, yeah. I, I do documentary. I love beautiful shots. I love, but then it becomes more like it's a movie instead of connecting with me. There, there comes a point where it's overly produced and now it seems like just a huge commercial instead of getting, I didn't get a connected feeling from it because, because it was just a huge commercial, I guess. Right. It was too, too much production and not enough, uh, content. Con- Yes. Yeah. Usable content stuff you wanted to know, information you wanted to know about the bikes. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. They could have spent more time talking about a lot of stuff they left out. Like they didn't even talk about, which we'll get into the cable clutch. Like they, there was a whole, instead. They, they didn't talk about that much at all? Zero. Zero. No, we found out about There's that. There's quite a few comments in, yeah. in the chat about the cable. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Yeah. You think they would have talked about that? That's a big chain. Correct. Okay. They didn't on purpose. Mm. Instead, they showed us, which we'll talk about, they showed us some glory shots with some different people whom we tried to figure out who they were, which they could have then taken that time, same time of doing that overly produced stuff. And they could have spent the time on talking about the meat guts and how they're going to serve their customers and things like that. So anyways, I don't want to be too negative here, guys. Uh, Again, I have Harleys and I love Harleys. I just, uh, uh, I can be critical. So there you go. Um, yeah, so I just feel like, yeah, that was one thing they didn't mention. But we will, I'll give you my opinions, uh, both as a, uh, in a little bit about the cable clutch. And I know some of you will pipe in uh, on the chat, and I appreciate that. So there's a lot of varying opinions on the cable clutch. So let, what do you say? Let's stay on track here. Do this. Ride longer and treat your ass with some respect already. Get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade seat cushion made of solids and elastic materials. And unlike the gel pads, it won't leak if punctured. The butt buffer is designed not to slide around your seat, fits all motorcycles, installs in seconds, easily cleans, and yep, helps to dampen vibrations. With plenty of miles to choose from, they assure you'll have a comfortable ass while riding. Mm, I like a comfortable ass lurch. Head on over to Law Bounty Biker <laughs> Store and check out our lineup of butt buffer seat cushions. There you go. Selling the bejesus out of those things. Big Daddy Kane moving those things like a kilo of cocaine. <laughs> They're that hot, huh? <laughs> They're that hot. That hot. We don't sell kilos of cocaine in our store, but we do sell butt buffers. FYI. Okay. So let's dive back in here. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So... Uh, yeah, so then they do um, uh, Talking Head. Uh, they talk, let's see. All right, no, they don't do that. I did that. All right, by the way, um, through we already talked about this. Through the different videos, the different employees came out. You guys think that's a good deal that the employees, there were, you know, managers of or heads of departments and stuff like that, talking about their contribution to the 2021 models. Since I didn't see it, I don't know. I would say it sounds like a good idea. But based on some of the comments where people were saying watching uh, engineers talk about the bikes was painful. So maybe the the people they had on there weren't uh, dynamic personalities, it doesn't sound like. Right. Okay, fair enough. Michael Payer says, personally, uh, I like the feel of the cable clutch. Okay, they're talking about cable. We're going to get to that. But yeah, good. I, I love that you guys are chatting in there about that. There, I love that. That's awesome. Brad Johnson in there. He's a patron member. Very knowledgeable, by the way, guys. Uh, yeah, I just trying to hit some of the comments. Uh, do you want to, are you comfortable here? Big Daddy Kane, do you want to pick up the uh, CVO models or you want me to kick it off? No, I'll, I've done some research on this. Ooh, so I'm more than happy to. Um, I'm going to start before I even discuss anything that I have always believed that if Harley Davidson wants to be successful, that they need to trim down their line. And I'm not saying necessarily the models that they're offering per se, but just the different variations of them. And I understand that they're on a production line. It's like if you buy a Toyota or a Chevy or a Ford, they put different options on. But I think that if they really financially really want to focus, they know what their key bikes are and what the people are selling. And kind of because you have you have a Road King, then a Road King special. Then you have a Road Glide and a Road Glide special. And then you have the, you know, the uh, electric light standard and you have this. And I get why they're doing it but I almost wonder how much money they're putting out in production stuff that they could save by focusing and narrowing down what they, they're going to be their core bike. So I, that's, I'm just going to say that up front. People may or may not agree. I agree but, with but from you. From a financial standpoint, why offer so many variations? Mm-hmm. Offer a black model and a chrome model, but you don't have to have the regular and the special. 
You know, right. That's something, you know, they need to kind of wear that down. And they kind of did that with the Dyna a little bit with the new platform with the Dyna and Softail combination. But anyways. Yeah, so, no, that's a great point that I wouldn't have brought up. Yeah, I agree. So especially, and they're, you know, to, to, to uh, spin off that comment a little bit, uh, you know, that's why I think because they are a struggling to a certain extent company, they're still trying to find their way in this new market as a lot of the core customers are getting older. We've talked about that in the past. I agree to for them, and I think that's what they're doing is consolidating. What do we do good? What did we do good? What is our top selling bikes? And let's focus and make those really good. Instead of trying to get too diverse and doing kind of a bike over here and a bike over here, they're still being progressive because they've got some of the new the you know models that are coming out in the Pan America and stuff like that. But yeah, good point. Good point, Big Daddy. Mm-hmm. That's why we got them here. So we've got there's the Road Glide, Street Glide, Limited, and Tri Glide, and that's our base. That's our base um, stance that we're going to start with the discussions. Okay. Um, the big thing is, is that the CVOs now all come with the Milwaukee 8, 117 cubic inch motor, uh, which is the highest displacement that they've ever rolled out. And then they've also, even though we'll, we may get into parts and stuff later, but they've also introduced some parts that will increase that, the 114 and 117 up to 122 or even 130. Uh, all the new models are coming with the TPMS. Uh, all the models have the CVO badging spread around the bike. Uh, as expected, there's some different paint options. And, and CVO, the custom vehicle operations, has been known for that for a while. Mm-hmm. And then um, they also came out with some new colors. Um, the one, the bronze armor with the matching smoke satin chrome. And, um, of course, the Rogue Glide now is going to have the cast laced wheels w- um, with the cast outer rim. So... Those are some things that they've done for that. I can say, looking at the website, some of these color combinations are really kind of cool. Um, instead of just a, you know, I have a black ultra, but having the option to go in and you can pick some different colors is pretty cool. Did you, you may have, I was chatting. Did you mention the ones that are coming in CVOs? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I figured you did. I just wanted to uh, follow up on that because I was chatting. Um, we've got some great chat going on in there and uh, D Barnes says, uh, what did he say? It was not infotaining at all, the, the presentation. I agree <laughs> to a certain extent. I'm glad they did it. I think it's a good move, but it wasn't that great infotaining, so I had to laugh at that. Brad Johnston is in there saying he would hate the idea of buying a CVO and still having to change the bars, seat, add a tour pack, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and another thing that they did, um, traditionally, the Heritage Softel Classic has always been in the cruiser line, although it is a type of, touring bike uh, but now they are actually classifying it with the hard um, fake leather bags i mean the when you think of leather bags you're thinking of the soft bags and stuff they've gone to a hard bag now and they're actually classifying that as a touring bike now too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting interesting anything else about cvos bro i do agree with some of the colors are pretty cool let's look here and then we will move on there we go Let's look at the uh, CVO Street Glide and just browse here just for a second. Yeah, the CVO Limited is their most expensive other than uh, the trike, but um, that's at 44000 Good yeah. God. The Road Glide's at forty one. The Street Glide's There's at There's some people four. talking in here. But you can get a regular Ultra Limited for twenty eight six ninety nine, which I think is a, a decent price for a bike that's fitted that well with stuff. Yeah. So the CVOs, you're definitely paying for the extra motor, the extra chrome. Me and Brad Johnson have had this conversation a few times over the years. Um, I'd almost rather get a limited and then add what I want to add. Agree. So I agree. Hundred percent. I and I know a lot of you like CVOs. It's cool. They're there. Um, I don't. I'm not a big CVO fan because I would rather save all that money, buy a regular regular special, and then I'll spend half the money. And I'll dress it better, doing the parts that I want, making it mine. I think that's part of the experience. Um, also, CVOs, we know. We do a lot of handlebar installs and stuff and work it on these bikes. They don't follow all the wiring diagrams. There's weird shit with them. If you leave them, it's cool. I'm not saying you can't work on them. I'm just saying you can look in the manuals and they're like, that is not the wires that the regular bikes have. Where does that go to? And it gets rather complicated 
which is the key to custom vehicle operations is you kind of set it, buy it, forget it, basically. Um, and you pay a lot more, in my opinion. I, you imagine If I bought a Streetlight Special for 30 k instead of paying 40 42 for a CVO, that's $12,000. I, and we do all the work, you know what I can do for just six grand to that bike? Uh, you know, you're paying a lot more for parts, basically. And, and let's be, let's take this in retrospect. You can buy a Yamaha Tonneray, their top 1,000 cc bike, and it's MSRP on is $18,000. But yet we're upset that for an ultra limited, Harley wants 28,000. And it's uh, has a lot, it's a lot more of a bike, a lot more of a touring but th- let's look at what's happening with trucks. I remember when you used to buy a half ton truck for 25,000, now they're $42,000. If you get a deezer, you know, a top of the line deezer, you're talking 65 to $70,000. Somebody put that in the comments here, yeah. And, and now you've got people are balking at spending $70,000 for a three quarter or one ton diesel pickup. When years ago, you know, I bought a three quarter Dodge diesel um, from Dave Smith, and it cost me thirty six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I, you, we can say this about the pricing, but everything's going up. Yeah, and I mean, even if you look at the KTM's, the BMWs, all of them have raised significantly. Even the BMW Adventure bikes, seventeen, eighteen thousand. Now they're twenty four grand. So it's not just Harley doing this. I think it's actually something that's that's happening because of just the way the the market's working Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know i think that's fair good information and uh yeah so a lot of people a lot of chat going on it's so much it's hard to keep up with thanks guys we love having you involved and again that's not a put down if you like cvos cool that just my personal all of us it's my personal opinion is i just would rather buy my own parts and mismatch and do it the way i want to do it and i love wrenching which is what this channel is all about right is uh wrenching and working on your own bike and kind of stuff Lurch, do you want, let's do this real quick. I think we should do this. And then we're going to talk about some new uh, audio stuff or Ricky, R- let Ricky do this one, the big daddy. Are you searching for the easy, easiest and quickest detachable luggage system on your motorcycle? Rick Hit Rack has just what you're oh, looking Rick. for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage systems. The father-son team designed some really special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep, and these guys ride. So they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also check out their full line of touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use a Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Head on over to the Law Abiding Biker Store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. And Rick Rack. Yeah. I've tried to imitate that, Rick, you know, in your honor in the past. When you're not I, here. I just can't do it justice. We pretty much mutilate it. Yeah. But uh, we're doing it in your honor. I hope you know that because uh, we're, we're definitely admitting that we're not as, as good as you at that. All right. So let's... Uh, dive in and we're going to just keep moving along. This is a great episode. I love the chat. This is great. I, I absolutely enjoy this, guys. Love having you along for the ride. And I'm trying to chat in there where I can. Uh, Lurch, do you want to talk about some of the uh, new audio stuff? Are you educated on that? No, but I will talk about it. I'm, well, I know you, yeah, you'll just wing I, I was, it. I was looking that. And, and That's copious show notes, by the way. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Uh, that's what so we do. The Rogue Glide and Street Glide are coming. Uh, is, I assume that's a special. Is it just a Rogue Glide and Street Glide in general? Uh, so yeah, all the CVO models are coming with, coming. yeah, okay. with the Boombox GTS. Um, the, uh, and the, those are the specials. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. The regular models don't cut. They come with the 4.3 screen, the small non-touch screen. So of the CVOs, the Rogue Glide and Street Glide, then you're talking about, you're coming with the new Harley Davidson audio by Rockford Fosgate stage two audio system. Yes. That's new. Let me make yeah. sure. Yes. All the CVO, mo- the C, okay. All right. All the CVO models are coming with the Boombox GTS, mm-hmm. the Rogue Glide and Street Glide CVO. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure that right. I, I I was making sure I was hearing you right. Are coming with, yes, Rogue Glide, Street Glide CVO are coming with the new Rockford Fosgate. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. I, yeah. I breezed through the show notes and I missed that. But so uh, speaking of Rockford Fosgate, if you're interested in upgrading your audio system yourself, we've got you covered with awesome tutorial videos. Mm. We did install a Rockford system. Uh, we have videos for Rockford Fosgate, Harley Boom, J and M Sounds, and Hog Tunes. 
you can find that at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash buy videos. There you go. We got a bunch of different installs if you guys want to upgrade. I'm going to have to get or find one of those and have a listen to it and see. What yeah, they partnered. Like. It was yeah. a big segment in the video. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. didn't see it. So That they partnered with okay. uh, Rockford Fosgate on that. So I don't know if that's going to go to other bikes eventually, but right now um, it's to those two. I wonder why they're doing that. Is, you think there's a future partnership there with the audio? Well, I, they're already partnering, but I think that maybe- like In a get, larger scale, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, testing it out in these CVO models and then see how it works and then potentially move yep. that direction. I think so. That's my gut. I don't know that. I got no inside information on that, but I think that's what's happening. Um, so right now, if you don't get the um, the other CVO models that they come out with this year are just coming with the Boom Audio Stage 1, right? And they're all coming with the Boombox GTS touchscreen, right? Mm-hmm. All that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But uh, yeah, I thought that was something interesting. Um, I had to actually research that. They really didn't say that. They just were so happy about talking about Rockford Fosgate and then about the system. And I'm like, oh, cool. All the CVOs are coming. Cool. So I start researching. I'm like, no, only the Rogue Glide and Street Glide. But the, what are the other two bikes? Tri Glide. I forgot what CVO models already. Uh, the Tri Glide and uh, the Limited. Limited are not coming with the Rockford Fosgate. They're coming with the regular Boom Audio Stage 1. It's just the Rogue Glide and Street Glide. How strange. And I had to go through all the specs and I learned that. So I was like, yeah, okay, well, and that's the stuff they could have spent more time on, right? Right. Like that's meat and potatoes yeah. stuff. And they didn't even, they just breezed over. I was thinking, oh, all the CVOs come with And then I'm starting looking at trying to break this down before I did my video. And I'm like, okay, that's really weird um, that they would do that. But whatever. So if you want that premium, you got two choices. If you want, the, if not, just head over, get one of our videos, and you can install a uh, one of those great systems, um, even more than Rockford Fosgate on your bike. And uh, nothing but uh, awesome reviews on those videos, guys. Those premium tutorial videos. Most of our stuff's for free, of course, here on YouTube, but we do sell some of our videos to uh, help keep the lights on. Here. So maybe that justifies that forty-four thousand dollars price tag because they've I don't know. upgraded audio. I still would rather put my own audio system in because I get to yeah. pick what I want. You know, and that's going back right to the CVO thing. But I'm sure it sounds great. I'm yeah, sure there's it a comment great. in here that somebody said they uh, listened to it. Oh, it's insanely loud. Nice. Yeah, a lot, a lot of that aftermarket stuff is good, uh, and and nothing against Rock for Fosgate, but there are other options too. And again, just for the CVO price, man, I'd I'd rather. Buy buy the twenty eight thousand dollar bike and and slowly put the money into it and get it the way I want it. But that's me. Good. I do. I love the colors on some of those CVOs, though. Jeez, they are. They are. They yeah. really and they really talked about it in this thing. This new street glide special I'm looking at here, guys. If you haven't seen it, it's the bronze armor. That's cool. And it comes with like a bronze armor. I forget what they call it. Satin chrome. Do you see that? It's also a similar. It's like a satin chrome. Like for the tank, yeah, dash so, panel yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. It, I, I like the CVO badging on the on yeah. the saddlebags. I think that is very tasteful and it is looks really sharp along with the red line around the um, derby cover. Yeah, I, and I wonder if that black satin chrome is going to be. I, I would assume it's more durable than the, everything that's painted and powder coated now. I know some of the complaints guys have with the blacked out bikes now or rock chips, you know, right? Black paint and everything. So that being satin grown is probably a tougher product yeah and i notice also the uh, engine guard is different yep yeah for the cvo sleeker yeah for the cvo and of course it's been a few years now but uh, they took off the lowers and the lowers on those were obviously to protect but also it housed the extra speakers that were down there mm-hmm. good that, point it's Rick. been a few years that they've gotten rid of that but i wondered if they would ever bring that back but it doesn't look so oh good i see point. they've got Lid speakers, and obviously they have fairing speakers. They well, the just, CVOs have lid yeah, speakers, yeah. yeah. At, sorry, thank you for clearing that up. Look yeah. at this, we're looking at CVO model. Yep, yep. So it's got those additional speakers, but you're right, it doesn't have those lower speakers anymore. No, nope. it's, it's been a few years, as far as I recall, it, it with is. The, that yeah. they got rid of that. Um, but I wondered if they would eventually bring that back, because some guys are obviously going and buying the lowers and putting them on and then putting in different companies make uh, kits for those. Uh, that you can put, you're just basically buying a shell of a lower and then you're packing it full of speaker. Right. And uh, Michael Pierce in here, he said the, the chopped engine guard means you can't install lowers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't right. know if they'll ever bring that back on uh, CVOs where they're putting the lowers, but uh, yeah, good conversation. Let's keep on going as we got still a lot 
plenty of information here. Do you want to talk about the special models, either of you? Or you want me to roll with it? Um, I'll talk about it because okay. I, I was looking at them a little bit um, online. And uh, the special models, as many of you know, up until this year was the blacked out version. So if you bought, like last year, if you bought a uh, Road King, then the Road King was going to be uh, just the regular stainless and the silver forks and everything. So they came out with these specials and the first one, uh, the Road King special came out, was all blacked out, et cetera. Uh, so it, this is kind of that, plus they use a lowered shock in the rear, which is one inch lower than normal, gives it a little bit different stance. Um, but the exciting news is for a lot of people is that in the Rogue League, the specials, now instead of just being black, you can get them in a chrome option, which I think is That's cool smart. because there was a lot of people that wanted the special, but they wanted chrome. This guy? Yeah. yeah. Some I of mean, us still like chrome, guys. Yeah. We didn't and go with so the black fad, I, which is cool. I love the look of the blacked out stuff. It just seems to not hold up as well, the painted stuff. Painted versus chrome. Chrome, if you get something on it, you can take some 4 out steel wool to it, mm. polish it off. It just seems to be so much more durable than a painted product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why when I bought mine in Sturgis this last year, I specifically stayed away from the all black because I had had that on my Road Glide special. And, of course, we ride and we don't get all um, nerded out about we got chips in our black fork and, and stuff like that. We don't worry about that because we're riding – lots of miles each year but that's one of the reasons why when um squid asked me hey why didn't you get the black version like his because my bike is exactly like his except for and i said i didn't want the black forks or anything these things are more durable and i know that on the ride home i'm gonna get 15 chips right um so now now we have the blacked out and chrome option for the road glide and street glide special what are the special models this year uh, the Road Glide Special, Street Glide Special, and the Road King Special. Nice, and nice. They, they all have that lowered suspension in the rear. Mm -hmm. GTS yep. instead of the GT, right? The, it's yeah. got the better they stereo. All, uh, well, the they, specials they all have the, the GTS 19 and on, but it has the touchscreen large unit. Right. The specials, right. So, yep. Thank you. That's yes. what I meant. Yep, good. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I am very happy. There was a lot of complaints when they first started, like Rick says, with the special models, um, just doing the blacked out versions. And so they reintroduced that chrome because I have a 14 and it was chrome. And that's literally, I, I love my bike, number one. Number two, that's literally one of the reasons I would have, I, would, I knew they would eventually come back with chrome. I would not have bought a special model. Why should I be, you know, not have a special model? Because I, not everybody wants black. I think there's, uh, again, I think it looks great and there's a lot of people that like it. Awesome. And uh, uh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talking rock in the chat says, talking rock says 2000 bucks for the black option. Mm, yeah. Dang. So it's 2000 bucks extra. Yeah. Is what he's saying. So yeah. Charging for it and see, I I'm golden. Cause I like the Chrome. Yeah. So I'm saving money too. I feel like a bargain shopper. Yeah. Nice. A bargain, bargain shop in Harley's, but uh, thanks. Good information uh, there in the chat. So what else we got? And they talked about being uh, the perfect ride. They did go into, yeah, they went back into their video about Sturgis and, uh, you know, talk about some of the great writing about Sturgis. Better yet is my documentary film. Show you a whole bunch more on that, guys. And uh, so, yeah, we did. And I just, we already talked about that up front. So, uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, looks like three color options for the Rogue King special. We want to look at that because I had a favorite. Let me go up here to bikes, motorcycles, touring, and the Road King, where is it? Where is it? Oh, right there. Mm, what do you guys think about this color, which I mentioned it on my YouTube video? You may or may not like it, but I like this color the best. What's it called? Snake Venom, bro. What do you think of that? If you're not a green fan, but I think it I'm looks kind of cool, I'm not normally a green dude. fan, but I do like that. That's a nice dark green. I, I like these. I mean, it kind of changes the wind, depending on the angle you're looking at the bike. It almost looks black, so it's yeah. almost like an onyx. It's, it's it's green. It's got a little bit of blue. See how it kind of goes blue and then black? The old Rogue King is still yeah, a sexy cool. bike, isn't it, Big Daddy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I actually like it. I watched your video, and so I went on and checked it out. Um, I emerald green, dark greens are my favorite colors. Oh, no shit. Okay. And so when I saw that, the only thing about that particular, and of course it's not in person, so you can't, right. you can't beat me up too much over it, but I, I don't mind like that whole clear look, you know, when we used to do, 
you know, blue pearl on, on white or blue pearl on blue. And you get that onyx kind of deal. But the way that that looked on the tank, it almost turned like a purple. And I didn't particularly care for that. Mm, yeah. It circles around. Yeah. See, so it kind of has. Yeah, you're right. There's some purple. And, and it may just be, it may just be the angle and the shots of that 360. I don't know. But if in person, thing, it may be different. If that thing was just like dark green, man, I'd be all over. I almost bought a regular road glide instead of a road glide special when I bought the white bike because they had it in a dark green and I would ended up going with the special because of the radio upgrade and the GPS and stuff, but, um, in the touch screen and stuff, but I loved that dark green that they came out with for a short time. Noise. And of course, all the special models coming with that one fourteen cubic inch engine, Milwaukee eight. Mm hmm. There you go. All right. So let's talk about, we're going to rip through some of this, uh, stuff. Um, as we, uh, and we still got just a little ways to go. Again, having fun. Glad you guys are here. Well, we get off on tangents. As we, we get off. Do. That's we're pretty good at that. And uh, this is actually more focused than we usually are. Quite honestly, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a disturbing. Um, so since 2014, um, we're going to talk about the hydraulic clutch system. Yeah. I guess maybe I should jump in here. Yeah. Do a it. little bit. All right. You got to wet your, you gotta started, watch your whistle I'm gonna, first. Hope you, hopefully, you guys have a beverage of your choice. Whatever that may be, we're not promoting alcohol here, but uh, maybe you have a tea. I don't know. You can drink all the alcohol you want, just don't drink and drive. There you go. So there was somebody who came in here uh, that said nope to the two thousand dollar upgrade for the black. He said it was nine hundred. I'm not sure which is correct, but I guess go I on their I would website. That. Yeah, good. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, go on, price it out. Um, okay, so two thousand. I'm going to wing it here. Uh, two thousand fourteen. They came out with the hydraulic clutch. I was one of the first people to get the 2014 because I got it in the spring of 2000 or the fall of 2013. And I was one of the, Hardy didn't even know about the clutch, the hydraulic clutch or the recalls. I had to take my bike in because the clutch wouldn't work at all. I had to actually sh dry shift or shift without the clutch and stuff to get it there. Um, they started realizing the mechanics didn't know. It was shortly after that, like months later, that they finally came out as they started selling more models. They did have some hydraulic clutch issues. No big deal. Every manufacturer has recalls. I don't care who you are. Um, that I'm not that overly concerned about that. Since they did the little recalls, um, it, it's worked great, and it works great. Um, now, my police bike also has... Um, I had a cable clutch I've ridden and my bikes before that. So I ride, I've ridden both. So my bike, uh, out here, one of them, uh, two of them have, I believe cable, right? Uh, yeah, they both do, yes, they do have cable. So I'm very experienced with both. I also ride the police motorcycle. I've ridden hydraulic. I've ridden, uh, uh, cable being a police motorcycle instructor too. I've instructed people on both. So I just want to give you a little background about what I'm about to say. So hopefully it lends just a little bit of credibility to it. Um, hydraulic clutches have been around a long time. Other manufacturers, uh, we couldn't believe it took Hardy that long to come out with one. This is not new technology. It's not rocket science. Making a hyd hydraulic clutch system should be really easy. It, the, and, and so here, and I know there's a, a couple different thoughts on the hydraulic. I'll tell you this again, as an instructor and have ridden both of them, you'll hear a lot of different complaints. I'll talk about some of those complaints. Um, I'll tell you straight up that there's less hand fatigue with a hydraulic system. There just is. They're easier to pull. They're very consistent, um, especially if you're going to be riding cones, courses, or you're going to be in heavy traffic. It just is. The, the hydraulic, hydraulic clutch stays very consistent. It's easier to pull in and hold long-term because once you get it in on the grip, it's very, very easy. We talk about the gray area, um, what we call it, other people call it the friction zone, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. It's somewhere in between letting your clutch out and having it in and you're finding that gray area. And that's how we do low speed maneuvers. It's how we do a lot of maneuvers. It's how we work cones. It's brake balance, clutch throttle, all that kind of stuff. Um, so a lot of people will say that there's a wider gray area in the cable um, clutch system. I agree, but it shouldn't matter. Okay, and here I'll finish up with that thought. Um, my opinion is, well, number two, the high, the cable clutches, again, they're fine, but you have to constantly adjust the clutch plates. They don't self-adjust. So with our police bikes, we were always having to get them over on their side. We have videos on this channel. 
we're, we're going to have to make a new one now because we're going back to cable. Yep. We'll do an updated one. You got to get in there. You got to adjust them. Not only is there adjustment with the clutch plates in there that you have to be aware of, then you also, every time you got to adjust the cable part. Um, it's a pain in the ass, especially when you're running police bikes and you're training people and you're always having to adjust these damn clutches. The hydraulic systems from start to finish <laughs> is they just work and they self adjust themselves. So you never, they just are very zero maintenance. Once they go out, they go out and you just replace them. Is it worth interrupting? I'm good. Yeah, it is <laughs> yeah, worth it. It sounds like it. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, yeah. Uh, like a cable clutch, like trying to pull a sailor ah, off your sister. Nice. Who said that? <laughs> T-A-S-W-R, whoever that is. I don't know what his task were, is. Uh, but yeah, that was worth it. Totally worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good call. So w let's bring it back into the cable clutch. So again, the hydraulic clutch, no adjustments. They fixed the recalls and why they're going away from it. This is, it's kind of bad when you're buying a premium bike and you're buying old technology. It's kind of embarrassing to me um, for them to go backwards. Uh, here's another argument that a lot of guys will make, especially with some guys that compete or with experience. And I love this argument because I've had uh, some students argue this and I, I, I tell them what's what's from my perspective. Um, so there is a little bit of a learning curve going from a cable clutch. No doubt. You have to be a little bit of a, to my opinion, just a little bit better rider. Okay. Sure. But that's easy. Okay. Um, you should be able to get on any bike. If you're truly with your skills and you feel like you train a lot, I'm telling you, you, it doesn't matter what bike you can get, whether I get on my KLR or whether I get on my Hardy or I get on an Indian, give me five minutes with that bike. I'll feel my friction zone, my gray area, and I'll ride it on the course. And you should really that's as easy as it is. If you're worried whether you have a cable clutch or a hydraulic clutch, it's because you haven't trained enough. I'll just tell you that. You're not comfortable enough with feeling a bike and really becoming one with it and the friction zones and all that kind of stuff, the gray area. I can ride our courses. I've ridden our courses on cable and hydraulic. You can do it no faster, I guarantee, with a cable than you can with a hydraulic. Low speed, doesn't matter. Um, there is a little bit of less of a gray area with the hydraulic, but Again, it doesn't matter. I can ride the course the same. You just have to get familiar with it, get familiar with the bike. The beautiful part is I don't have to adjust it. It's easier to pull and I get less hand fatigue. So for all you, so here's the thing, Lurch, and you know this. Some guys are like, they get so particular. I'm like, one time my bike was having problems. I got off my bike. I had been training on it all day. I kickstand it, got on another guy's bike and every bike's different, right? Mm -hmm. It just oh, yeah. feels different. So rode it five minutes and then rode the course. You just have to get on the bike and feel the friction zone, learn where it's at, and you go from there. Oh, I remember um, when you first got your bike, the 2014, that had the first hydraulic clutch, and you're like, you, you, and I had my 08 street glide, I think, at the time. Yeah. Obviously, with a cable clutch. He said, hey, why don't you jump on and see what the thing feels like? I'm, and I, <laughs> yeah, I, about the bike almost took out off from underneath me because I start to let it out and hit the friction, the zone. friction zone, and I couldn't feel it. But. I, after riding it just a little bit, it didn't take me too long to figure it out. So it just right. takes some practice. It, it, they're definitely different. Yep. But um, then when you get back on a cable bike, yeah, after riding hydraulic, too. it's different. Yeah. So it's just... It's like you said, you got to spend a little time. Yep. If you are if you have several bikes and you get on different bikes, take a little bit of time to fill that friction zone and feel where it's at. You'll be yep. fine. Some guys get too particular about his yeah. mic. And they'll, you know, I'll hear them in the they classes. Like and they're like, just I want to adjust it so it just comes off my grip. How about you just learn to ride any clutch? Okay, number one. Number two... I do on my police bike, there's aftermarket clutch handles mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily adjust it completely, but it'll make it so that it seems like you don't have to let it out. And that's just hand fatigue because mm -hmm. if you're all the way out and you're letting it out, your hand will get fatigued. So if I want it to come out right here, so my hands, because you're riding right there all the time, right. you just get a handle that comes in and it's the same thing. So um, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm just telling you that, that uh, I don't think it's that big a deal. I think it's a big deal that Hardy's going backwards in technology and for a premium bike and they're charging more. Yes, sir. So I'm thirsty. I ride one with hydraulic and one with a cable clutch, my 17 heritage. To be honest with you, when I get on them, I'm so used to them. It doesn't matter what kind of clutch it is. Right. I realize that the heritage is a cable clutch, but I just, I've been riding for so long. I just know that feeling of when it breaks that point that it's mm -hmm. going to allow you to move. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bother me one bit. I get though, where people have said, okay, you've had hydraulics. Now you're taking it off. Is this another one key fob Harley 
cost savings to them and screw the customer deal. And that's a mm. lot of the talk, not here in this chat, but I have seen that in a lot of other places. They're like first you used to give us two fobs. Now you give us one and yeah. then you make us pay a hundred dollars for a second fob that saves them a hundred dollars. Well, now they're going from a hydraulic clutch to a cable clutch system. It's saving them money, but yet the prices yeah. weren't weren't reflected of that. No heel shifter anymore. No heel shifter. Which I hate was, heel shifters anyways, but that was last year, 2020. Yeah, I know. They took away the heel shifter. So I'm telling you right now that there is some feeling by the Harley Faithful of, well, okay, you're going back to the cable, but you've already, why is that? And they assume that it's because of the cost. I think that's a fair assumption. And, you know, for me, having been through three or four different issues with the hydraulic clutch on my 14 Ultra to the point to where I kept telling them it's not the diaphragm, it's letting air in. There's somewhere getting air in where I actually had the head guy for their warranty service deal call me and ask me what's going on. And I said, you're getting air into the system and it's not, you've replaced the diaphragm on it. The only thing that has fixed it is when you replace the entire new system with one straight from the factory. I said, there's something going on that's eating away and allowing that air in. And he actually disclosed to me at that point that they had figured out and was going to be doing a recall to replace the systems because they were finding out that the brake fluid, hydraulic brake fluid, was eating the finish on the master cylinders. And they were using the same master cylinders type coating that they had been using in the past, like for the brake fluids and stuff. And they found that the hydraulic fluid was just a little bit more corrosive. And uh, it's pretty cool. They sent me a letter signed by the guy and they sent me some money clips and some police stuff. And, and I just told him, I said, I don't know what's causing it, but you've now replaced the diaphragm twice and you've replaced the cable and bled the whole system. And after three weeks, and it wasn't until they replaced the whole thing. And if I remember right on yours, when yours did it, they just took it off of a new bike and replaced your whole master. Cause they had none. They? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they had none yet. Yeah. So I mean, but you can't say, well, they did the plunger Harley, too. They had to do a second recall. They yeah. did the plunger in yeah. there. Yeah. You can't say, well, that's why Harley suck. Well, I can tell you my BMW, I just got a recall notice on my BMW for the fuel pump. And I got a recall notice on my Indian that I don't even own anymore yeah. three weeks ago. So they're all getting recall. Notices Car manufacturers stuff, get so. recalls. Yeah. Some people dog on Harley, but you know, and, and I dog on them too here and there, but recalls happen in all over boats, motorcycles, cars. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into, uh, EFI tuners here in just a little bit. There's some stuff you'll want to know there. Either of you. Hey, bikeholics searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3d has the products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycle. Zero 3d has got your back with Chrome and black parts, lighting and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing and more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email at sales at zero3d.com or give them a call at 715-808-0027. Check out your local Harley or Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. I like it, the gold. A new leader has emerged, so check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for all the new Honda Goldwings. Better yet, help support us and head on over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. There you go, Zero 3D. That's right. Longtime sponsors. Love those folks. All right, so let's dive into uh, Ricky. Do you know uh, about this or Matt about aftermarket EFI tuner changes? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, uh, it originally came up as a topic in our troll free um, patron Facebook. Mm, private uh, Facebook group, troll free zone. Oh, look at he did a little ad. I like yeah. it. And, um, of course what they're saying is they've changed. And so current aftermarket tuners will not be able to work on the new ECM, uh, for those that aren't familiar, it's the engine control module and that they're only going to be able to use the screaming Eagle tuner. And we should have all saw that coming after they paid out millions of dollars to the EPA, mm-hmm. um, cause they'd already started down that road where basically we're going to void your warranty. 
uh, we're going to increase your warranty from one year to two year, but we're going to avoid it if you mess with the ECM at all. And so that's why some guys like me, when I bought mine new and put the stage one and uh, Vance and Hines uh, 50 state legal uh, twin slash rounds on my bike, I went with the uh, Screaming Eagle tuner. And yes, it has a flat spot. It doesn't perform near as well. Sometimes I think that my they can't they don't do much honestly. One high output yeah. could probably take it just because that thing it. is just boosted up to no tomorrow. But there's a, it's brought up a lot of conversations like okay, what's eventually going to happen? Because when this warranty gets done, I may want to do something. And I think that the companies Vance and Hines and DinoJet and all these companies, I think they'll be smart enough that they'll be they'll produce a new plug in and they'll they'll produce you know firmware that will allow that to happen but um this is no surprise to me that this was coming because the minute you plug in anything it voids it and if you don't care about that that's fine this guy right here i'll um, never buy a warranty on a but, harley um, i'll do my bike how i want but for yeah. me the two year to save the two year and it's a new bike i went ahead and went the screaming eagle but i can tell you the day that that thing's done i'm putting a vance mm, 9's yep. fp3 and some dresser dual headers on it yep Good. Thanks, Rick. So I'm going to just talk about a few more things on the EFI tuners. So I'll tell you that uh, I'll just do a disclaimer and I did it on my video on YouTube. There's a huge lack of information on this. So take it with a grain of salt, but I did as much research as I could. I actually went into our local dealership um, and uh, they, I went to the mechanics, one of the head, he'd been there forever and the parts guys, nobody, even the service rider, then remember a lot of the dealerships don't have the bikes yet only the big dealerships they don't have a lot of the 2021 models yet so they they love talking to me because a lot of times i know things before them because i just get out there and i do the research um, but they didn't not were not aware of the efi tuner changes i like rick am not surprised uh i give hardy a little break on this one um, because it really is a lot of the epa the epa has been on their back forever i don't think that they wanted to do it. I think they're screaming Eagle tuners junk. It's not their fault. They can't to stay in EPA compliance. They have to have a tuner that really can't do much. Yeah. What What is an EPA a compliant gimmicky. tuner going to do for you? Not much. Uh, not much. I assume it's going to raise the rev limiter a little bit, but it's I, not no. going to, no, it won't even do that. Mm -mm, it doesn't. That's what the what head mechanic was pissed geez. about. Yeah, what you can't even raise the rev, rev, rev limiter. That's a gimmick to me. It's gimmicky. It is. Yeah, what it is. It's a canned map. Is, right. It's a canned map that you literally go in, having used it a couple times, you literally go in and pick your motor and your setup of Harley parts. It's a canned map. So yeah. what they say is by putting, by clicking it to the stage one air, and by clicking it to the stage one air, that it gives you a little bit more fuel to compensate right. for the extra air. It does not give enough because I can tell you at 3,000 to 4,000 RPM switching up as you're getting on a highway, there is a definite flat spot on my brand new Ultra that I can feel where it just kind of like doesn't have enough gas going into it. And then once it, I shift and get the RPMs down a little bit, it rides like normal again. But that's what it's supposed to do is add a little bit more fuel, just enough to still stay 50 state legal. You know, because they got rid of the whole 49 and 50 state legal thing. There was all that for a while, but it does do that. Um, that's what it's supposed to do. And then, of course, it allows you to make your modifications based on what you've done. So if you're going from a 114 to a 122, stage two, one, or just a 122, you can choose that. Or you can do stage two with a cam. And it'll let you pick which cam that you're going with, whether it's the torque cam or the horsepower cam. Mm -hmm. But it's all built around... EPA compliance, yep. 50 state legality. Mm. Yep. Good call. Now, and I know there's some of you out there and we get the comments all the time. I said it in my video. You're all the, that's it. I'm switching to Indian. Forget it. I'm done with Harley. <laughs> oh, I'm getting Indian. Okay. Well, we love Indians here. Big daddy's owned Indians. Indian mm. does the same shit. So don't fool yourself. We got squirt right here. And I know this for a fact prior to my video, we got squirt in here. He says, uh, uh, but the challenger, he just bought a new challenger in Sturgis, which is in my documentary film. It's been out for a year and dino jet just announced the ECM is too complicated for them currently. So all these bike manufacturers, even Indian is locking these ECMs down. Um, they're trying to do things now, make no mistake about it. Harley usually comes out with stuff quicker because there's just a ton more Harleys in circulation. So the aftermarket EFI tuner companies work harder to crack Harley than they do Indian. That's just a fact. Um, I love Indian. That's not a put down on Indian. They just don't sell near the bikes that Harley does. Um, 
So uh, all I can tell you is from my research, the way I understand it is they actually made the plugs different. Um, the CAN bus plugs different for plugging in where we plug in our FP3. But I will tell you this. Somebody else can make a new plug. I mean, FP3 I don't know if it's just a, the plug or the plug. they have to crack the ECM too. Right, right. They'll have to so, figure out the coding, change yep. the plug. It'll take them some time, but I would imagine if they're, they're already motivated enough to do it, they'll make it happen. And let's million not, dollar companies, right, yeah. Right. And let's not forget that the stage one kit for the Indian that I purchased and then later on we actually did an install video where we installed a complete um, exhaust system and we installed uh, a dyno jet um, fuel module on that Indian. Yeah. But the stage one that I had, it was there, it was a canned map that was on a little tiny thumb drive that they stuck into the uh, on the jukebox on the top that they plugged in. And then that's what programmed the bike to stage one. It was still 50 state legal. So they're Indians doing the same thing. Yep. They're all staying 50 state legal. And they told me straight out, as soon as I popped, uh, popped that dyno jet in and, and retuned it with that, that it voided the warranty. So, you know, they'll catch up to the Indians, but don't be fooled. It's and plus I found that the Indian parts were even more expensive than the Harley parts, which kind of amazed me a little bit. I thought they'd at least be equal, but yeah. Yeah. Good follow up, bro. So yeah, just is what it is the day and age we live in, but have no fear. They're all working on it. As soon as we have fuel, we sell fuel pack threes. We sell the heck out of those right in the law abiding biker store, law abiding biker.com forward slash store. Of course, as soon as there's uh, available FP threes for the new 2020 models and beyond, we will be selling them in our store and we'll probably do a, if they're a little different, we'll do a follow up video on getting them set up and tuning your bike and all that kind of stuff. Another reason it's up to you. I'm not do what each person wants. I did a warranty video on maybe some things to think about from here on out, whether you're actually going to buy a warranty for your bike. Um, and that's the reason I won't is because if you slap any of these EFI tuners that aren't a screaming Eagle, that doesn't really do anything. Then your warranty is void. It doesn't matter if you take it off. Some people think, Oh, just put your FP three on and then, and then tune it back to your uh, stock map before you take your bike to the dealership. They have a history. I already talked to the dealership and uh, trusted sources, and they can see a history of every modification you've made to your ECM. They can see that you put something on that wasn't a Screaming Eagle and took it off. So they're that myth, myth buster. Somebody said, I look for like the guy yes, from they Mythbusters. Did. How, what did he, I don't even know what he used to say, myth busted. Plausible? Did he used to say plausible? It's not even plausible. It's fucking busted. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, let's talk about, we're going to wind it down here. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, let's talk about the Street Bob. I'll cover this and then somebody else can cover the other. Not a lot to say, but I do like it. The new Street Bob 114. What a great looking bike. A light little bike. A powerhouse with that Milwaukee 8 114. God, that Man. thing's going to rip. Reminds me of a, my Dyna Lowrider S with the Screaming Eagle 110. Just a little ripper, but this with that M8 114, man, if you want a ripper, that is the one. Um, and around it's got some old school styling cues on it. it it's does. a good looking bike. Yeah, it is. I like it. It's cool. Cool. Um, yeah, a little Ciro hat up there. Got it, Sturgis. Because of that light little wake, uh, of course, gonna like we say, going to be a ripper. And you could uh, customize the heck out of those bikes, guys, of course, with parts and really make it yours. Of course, yeah, those aren't for touring. Those are, you know, around town bar hopping and uh, short day rides. Cool. I've got a Dyna Lowrider S here that I use for that stuff. Um, very cool. Um, I think that bike's really good. My personal favorite color is Baja Orange. If you get a chance... Check that out on the Harley website. Let me know what your particular best or favorite color is on that. Um, and if you're a chrome guy, nope, this only comes in a blacked out version. So if you like the black then and you like the look at the Street Bob, they are, if I had extra money, I would buy a Street Bob just to have it because I think they're so cool. Fast little bikes, little rippers. Um, also, they integrated a digital rider gauge. It's integrated into the handlebars. Um a couple guys have mentioned, and I've got some comments on my YouTube video that they actually don't like it because it's hard to read and it's small. You be the judge of that. I think a lot of guys would just rather have the larger, um, whatever you want to call it, non-digital gauge. But uh, nonetheless, it's a, a little progressive there, uh, baking it in to the top of the handlebars there. All right. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to skip over that. How about anybody want to talk about the iconic 2021 Fat Boy? Anybody? Or you want me? <laughs> oh, geez. Really, really? Rick? After that, you have to go first. 
Yeah. No, after that, he needs to wipe. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, that that's, was juicy, bro. I'm telling you right now. What's they, your problem with Fat Boy? They need. This is a V Rod guy coming from a V Rod, too. I'm telling you right now. They need to go back to the original Fat Boy look headlight. Mm, I really? I cannot stand that new LED headlight. It looks like a big square you know, coming at you. And We're going to pull it up here while you're talking. Yeah, I hadn't turned. <laughs> now I'm looking at the 360 and turning it and looking at the yeah, I, side to profile. To me, yeah. it, it does not remind me of the iconic fat boy that I remember watching in the Terminator or even the original prototype bike, prototype bike that I saw at the museum. Mm-hmm. It, it has just enough resemblance to make you think that it's like the old fat boy's with the tank and the low bars and you know, the obviously, the, tire, the, obviously solid wheels. the rear fender is totally different. Doesn't have the right. whole wraparound fender and the forks look like, Oh, that looks like fat boy. But then you see that headlight and it's like when you think a girl's really hot cause you're looking at her ass from the back of when you're getting your Burger King burger, <laughs> but she's but got a mess she turns around and her teeth is all fucked up and she's got zits <laughs> on her face. You know what Lurch That's calls those? Me. Lurch calls those a butter face. That's a butter face. She's hot. Butter face. Everything's good. <laughs> Everything's good. Butter face. So <laughs> straight up butter face. When I first uh, saw this new headlight that came out, I, I think it was a year or two ago. I was like, why did they ruin the look of the headlight? And why did they cut down that iconic rear fender? Oh, there's a guy dogging you, dude, in here. Straight up. No, he's not dogging. He's actually, it's a good conversation. But he says, this is the problem with Harley guys. They hate change, want the same thing year after year. Yeah. Well, I don't to think to some extent. I don't to some extent. No, it's funny comment. I don't. Good. I don't sure. think that's, some of the classic styling. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's at all. I just think that that headlight's fucking ugly. Yeah, well, there you go. So that's Straight my up. opinion. If you don't like it, it's shit. <laughs> no, and we like it. We bring up the, we, we actually, preach. that's a great conversation because I see that side of the argument. You know what I mean? I see it like maybe some of us are definitely a little bit old school and hanging on to the past. I don't know. Um, I like, everybody's got their own, at the end of the day, it's styling. You know, I like some new things and I don't like some new things they did, but they get to make those decisions, obviously the designers and uh, there you go. So they definitely no. could have upgraded the headlight as far as led and all that, but kept more of a classic look. Yeah. Just the, ra- just so the round headlight and leave the rear fender alone to where it has like that sexy sweeping look. But I also realized that the company reuses fenders on s- several bikes and there's less cost involved in that. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. I love the the 48, but I'm not small enough to ride those bikes. It looks like a little flat track bike. Right. We Rod haven't Yarger, talked a lot about yeah, those. Rod Yarger had one of those buddy of ours. He did. They are cool looking bikes. But Rest I, his soul. Yes. But mm-hmm. uh, I would look like a monkey humping a football on that thing. Yeah. It's just way too small a bike for me, but I just, it's a cool looking bike. And speaking of that, since real quick, as we wind it down here, guys, and finish up, uh, to talk about the street. Uh, I did read an article, and this is something they didn't talk about either in the thing. They didn't. The they street, axed the 750 street and 500, but nobody knew it. Well, One day it was on done, their site. Should have done that a long time ago. And you really can't even find any articles about it. I had to do some digging. I'm like, yeah, they got rid of the. It's not even on there. Just one day they took, and it was after. It seems like it was after the event. They just all of a sudden everyone's like, uh, I think they didn't update their site before the. Uh, they went lot or did the 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 virtual event because they axed those bikes now for the street series they've just got their or motorcycle street iron 883 the 1200 and the 48 yeah they've taken down the that's Sportster what they got line um they've taken down the sportster line quite a bit i yeah. mean remember at one point there was like these are theirs the several, sportster. Yeah. yeah there were several different models they had the 72 with that kick-ass paint and stuff like that I think they know where their market is with this. I mean, these sportsters are really big in Europe, uh, in Asia. Uh, obviously, they sell a lot in the U.S. Um, they've invested money several years ago into the new motor. Um, I'm glad there was rumors that they were going to nix the sportster and only sell it overseas and really keep pushing on the you know the new street. Um, XGs, I think what do they call it? XGs or whatever those streets where they had the 500 and 750. Yep. But I think a lot of that was also because that was when they got back. They've always been in racing, but when they started converting that bike into their race bikes, I think they thought that there would be a takeoff on that. And there's definitely a market for that. You know, a very light male or female that doesn't weigh a bunch, mostly an urban rider. You know, there's a deal for that. But 
I had heard the rumor that they were going to kill the sportster, and I was like, That's, oh, man. That, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Joe Bermundez says this is the last year for sportsters. Uh, he's just guessing that, or he has, or, or is that just a, the straight comment? So he's guessing it's the last year, or did he? That's just all he oh, says. Okay, okay, yeah. gotcha. I, sorry, I can't see the comment because uh, I, I don't know where to find it there. So, yeah, so he's basically think this is the last year for the sports is the way I'd assume that. Um, yeah, it could be. It could be. And, and well, There's we've, a prediction. we've done other podcasts talking about the direction of Harley and where they're going and uh, and what uh, Yakin's doing. And uh, he's they got to trim down the line. The line just got too big. Got to trim the fat. Got to trim the fat. Consolidate. Get, get so be good what you're good at and you know i i understand why they tried to expand into like this the fit the street 500 and 750 and some of those other bikes but mm-hmm. um they got they're trying to do too much in my opinion so they're getting back to basics and some of these lines are getting cut yep definitely all right so at the end guys here's something you obviously we need to be aware of um we do ride adventure around here too um love adventure riding wish i had even more time to do it um but uh, so we love adventure bikes. We're heavy into that. Um, I, Rick knows a lot about it too. And Oscar here, we ride here locally. I've, I right now I have a KLR 650. Um, so of course, I'm also interested in the Pan America. Um, that's their Harley's first adventure bike. So at the end of this virtual event, they talked about that. Of course, Jason Momo was heavy into it, although he's never been an adventure rider before. Um, clearly he's uh, been, been, paid to promote the new Pan America. Um, and so they filmed some video for it and they showed some glory shots from that video. And that video is going to release when they actually do a virtual event on the release of the Pan America Hardy's first adventure bike on the 22nd of February. So at the time you guys are live. So Monday, if you're listening in podcast format later, it'll be long after it will be done by the time we get this out in regular podcast format. But February 22nd, um, I believe 10, I forget, look it up. Um, uh, you should be able to find it on a Hardy site, uh, the link to the virtual event. They're going to show this little movie they made. I forget where they went. Um, did I put it in there? Kenya. So Yakin went to Kenya. Uh, Aquaman went to Kenya and uh, uh, hopefully found some water. And uh, uh, they, they did this film and this video, and they're going to announce the Pan America. We could go down a whole other road with the Pan America and what you think about that. I don't, I have my own thoughts and predictions about that. We've done episodes. Make sure you hit the podcast up. We've talked about the Pan America. Um, but I don't really want to do that on this episode. I guess I just need to sit back and watch the virtual event and see what I see. And, and, and then I can give you a better opinion about what I think that bike's about. And hopefully if there's enough content and I hope one of my local dealerships gets a Pan America because I want to do a YouTube video and I'll do a walk around of it. I don't know how test rides will be or not, um, but I do want to see it in person. I hopefully will be coming out next week with a video. I'll get it all done of my thoughts and some of the specs on it and give you some of my take and opinions and all that kind of stuff. But I'm excited only me personally, because I'm into adventure stuff. I think it's a move in the right direction. I don't know if their first bike's going to knock it out of the park, but I think you have to start somewhere. Um, kind of like with their electric bike, whether you like electrical vehicles or not, they started with the live wire. Every company's got to start somewhere. Um, and then hopefully they'll, you know, hone those particular markets in over time. But the adventure market, as Big Daddy knows, is huge. And uh, they would be, in my opinion, whether you like adventure or not, they would be foolish not to get a piece of that pie. You have any follow-up on that, Big yeah, Daddy? I'm going to start with uh, the first thing I think about them doing this, and the bike is a golf clap. Oh, no. Too loud? Too loud? Oh, yeah. That's, that's way too aggressive. I think, I think it's wonderful to see them looking at this. But once again... Uh, as Lurch and I have spoken about before, is that if you're going to put this bike out at 24,000 and expect to sway the diehard BMW GS riders, I don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to put this bike out at 20,000 and they can, which get, we don't know, we don't right, know. But yeah, but I'm if, assuming if they're going to put over this that. bike out at 20,000. Well, then you might sway some new people that 
we're, we're thinking of BMW, but when you have KTMs that are tried and true for less money, that's where I think they're going to run in. Originally, a lot of the word on the street um, was that this was going to be a competitor in the $18,000 range to compete with the low-end BMWs and the KTMs. I, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure where it's going to go. If it's 24,000, then who knows? I, I don't, I think you're not going to get BMW guys to switch. This new motor is supposed to be absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The I've, revolution. I've, I've heard a right. lot of, and I've read a lot of good stuff on it. So I think I'm waiting for the video and I'm also waiting to see what the price break is. Yep. That's going to be the big if thing. If they're really mm -hmm. going to try to compete with the BMW, they're going to get their asses handed to them. Yep. Somebody else. And I'm sorry, you guys, I love it that your comment Harley should, uh, let's see. Somebody made a comment. I can't remember what it was, but somebody basically said that in there and I'm sorry. Um, basically it's, it, it is, if they don't, if they can't compete with BMW and some of the others, they're going to have a real issue. And that was their problem with the live wire is just price. Like people are like, that's just ridiculous, you know, but th again, they have to start somewhere. It's kind of their beta test and uh, into the market and they got to dip their feet. So to speak, you got to get your feet a little wet before you dive all the way in. And I think that's what they're doing. So with their first adventure bike, that's going to be my guess. My guess is that it's going to be overly priced and uh, hopefully in the future, they'll be able to dial that in and get it uh, uh, figured out pricing wise. I will tell you that I'm very impressed with their uh, accessories that they're already showing. I mean, those bags look like really good, sturdy bags. Uh, the TFT screen with the ride control modules. They're doing it right. I mean, the right motor, the right accessories that look good. I think it's just going to be price. Uh, you're not going to sway some of these uh, European riders, r European bike riders, unless you give them something for it. So, okay, this looks good. I've done a test ride. This is two thousand or three thousand dollars less than the BMW. I'm going to go for this. If you're going to try and compete with the top dog, it's it's just going to be difficult. I think they got to they got to be somewhere in that KTM range. I think at least based on my personal opinion, knowledge of the subject. Yeah, Bill Turner says I heard the Pan America will be at seventeen thousand. Somebody else said it needs to be. Greg says it needs to be sixteen thousand. So it sounds like everybody in the chat is on board with us. Is that it's really got to be in that price point to be competitive with some of the other market uh, bikes on the market. I love Harley Davidson, and I would love to own one of these. But if it's the same price as a KTM twelve ninety R, yep. Which one do you think I'm going to take? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, it's hard Especially to go away tell, from the yeah. proven bikes. There, there are a lot of bikes out right now in adventure sport and off-road riding that have been around for a long time that are tried and true and tested. It's, it's, it'd be a huge leap of faith to go buy one of these when that's their first bike. It's, they, they need to launch it right. If they just have commercials with Jason Momoa, oh, it ain't going to happen. That's they all they're going to gonna have, bro. I'm not going to buy one. They need to get it in the hands of influencers that ride adventure. I need to see, yes. some, yeah. I need to see an influencer have it, take it out, ride it. Somebody Talk that's going to tell the it. truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cycle it, world. Somebody that doesn't work for Harley. Adventure bike rider. They need to give it to the guys that are actually doing these videos on the new Tonnerre and the new KTM. And they're doing long-term tests and mm -hmm. they come out and tell you everything about it. Yep. That's, that's what they're going to need to do. Somebody they're, that's not affiliated with Harley for sure. Right. And I'm about ready to get into the adventure bike market. Lurch is coming up. He's going to get an adventure bike so he can go riding with me. So I may have to wait a little bit to see, wait till this thing comes out, see what it's yep. priced at. Hear some reviews on it. And yep. who knows? Maybe either way, it's going maybe. to be a heavy bike Lurch. I mean, it I'm is. a heavy you, guy. I, I know, but when you <laughs> trust me, having ridden in on adventure trails, but this isn't a trail bike. No, yeah, this, no, this but, is for four service roads and fire. But roads. I'm saying yeah. even yeah. for some of those rutted up roads, a yeah. heavy bike. If, true. If it if the ergonomics are not as well as like the KTM, the ergonomics are absolutely fantastic, especially with the wraparound fuel tank because mm -hmm. their fuel tank actually is not on top of the bike. It's on the sides and it surrounds the motors or shrouds the motors, so it sets that Carries weight. weight lower. Yeah, yeah. It's the weight lower. I don't know what they're doing with this yet because when you look at it, I can't tell if it's a tank on top or if it's a wraparound because I really don't know what this is. You know, I'm guessing it's not an under seat like a Husqvarna. So yeah. I'm going to guess it's there. But so we could end up getting on one of these and be like, 
damn, this thing is balanced. Well, you don't know until you get on it and you actually take it, even if it's a forest service road that's rutted up because you know, you and I both know we went up to the slab and just riding that gravel road along the Rosa, you know, you, you're going like this at times and, and we're around. on bikes that are meant for this. I mean, I rode that BMW 12, 1200 GS. I was riding it on an off-road track out there doing mm-hmm. stand-up stuff and taking it up hills. These dirt bike guys are looking at me like, holy smokes, that dude's crazy. <laughs> so you can do anything as long as you're a good enough rider. Obviously, in the video, they show some pretty damn good riders. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that this has been so long in the in the making that Harley has done their research and got this thing balanced and right for this type of stuff because – I mean, it's, what is this? It's been like a four-year project? Yeah, it's been, we've been talking about the Pan America for years, haven't we? Just like, when's it coming out? But uh, yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, yeah, awesome. As we finish it up here, I'm not going to get into this. We're going to take it out. We're already in an hour, over an hour and a half. Thanks for sticking with us. It's what we do, plan on an hour, but we love talking, love hanging with the, all of you guys. Um, I talk about this. If you want to watch my YouTube video, I talk a little bit about it. Um, but there was a bunch of people and it, it, they're all, I'm sure good people. It, it, and I did that disclaimer in my video it has nothing to do with that, but there was like different stories they told in the virtual event. And honestly, I went and researched them all. I had a really tough time, like, cause I was trying to figure out like, how does this connect and why did they choose these people? Cause I don't really know who they are and I couldn't find a lot of stuff. There's one girl in there who seems like she has an Instagram following, um, and she does like ride out series for girls and stuff. I get it. I get some of that draw. They're trying to do that market. But there are some other people like one of these guys is like a, uh, he's some sort of business strategy advisor. He did the fat boy thing. It's like he helped some, what I could find about him is he helped a furniture company grow. So, so I, that was their attempt at bringing in influencers and outside people to talk. About I would say product. they brought in people, not necessarily influencers. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? I think, so, yeah. I think they were it was trying to reach the common, they, mm-hmm. they were trying to bring a wide array of writers from the right, the, the common people, I think. Yeah, I guess. There's a lot of people that have Harleys and, you know, that yeah. all walks of life. Yeah. You know, bankers, financial strategists. Uh, yeah, I get that. it. Yeah. I think they were trying to do that and yeah. i'm not gonna i'm Just not gonna flat. mock these people I, and, because, and that was not yeah, yeah because the I case mean, the fact i just is, don't know they who all they are a, they all had mm-hmm. a story to tell and right I, that was one of the big gripes on the let's give every let's give all these stars a bike yes and then we're gonna like oh hey this is great thanks yeah this is i think they were trying to fix that and then right you know that makes sense we could always judge we're know, not who judging it should it, or yeah. should not be right i didn't mind that part i still think my favorite part of the whole thing was him talking a little bit where he wanted with the company and then meeting the people that work on. Exactly. Exactly. No. And I agree with you. None of that was a put down. It's just funny to me that, uh, it, it, that they picked, I, I just think there's a lot of people to draw from and maybe somebody that connect, connects that or that's in the biker community. Cause the guy that does the business strategy advisor, but yeah, maybe they're going after, Hey, but they didn't say that. That's the problem. Rick with that is they didn't tell you, like I had to dig deep to find out who this guy was. Like, I get it if they told a story, right? Like they just showed him riding a bike and they showed these glory shots of him around some horses and riding dirt roads. Had they told me who the guy was, they they did a very poor job at storytelling is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Had they told me who that guy was like, oh, he's a businessman and he likes to get away from the office and ride hard. I can connect with that. They didn't tell who any of these people were, or any of their background, like, like we're supposed to know, like, so I didn't even get that he was a businessman. You see what I'm saying? He was some dude with a beard that was riding a fat boy. Like, who is this guy? So I just don't think they, I don't think they story told well, they could have. So again, that's not a put down at all on any of those folks. If you know them, that's fine. I just wish they would have told me the story more so that I could find out why they were on the video and how I could, I'm supposed to connect with these folks. That was my point. I hope that wraps that up. Yeah, it makes, yeah. makes, it wasn't a put makes down sense to me. No, on any no, of it's them. A, it's about it's the not way what they, we do here. No, it's about the way they presented it. Right. They didn't and tell me the story. Yeah. And it's an attempt to bring in people that are from all walks of life, but the way they presented it, yes. it fell flat. It, 
You're like, who are these people? Well said, bro. Yeah. Exactly. It's what yeah. I do. Yeah, it's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> it seems you're saying. That's a total supervisor. It seems. You know. <laughs> so what I think you're telling me is, <laughs> let me make sure I get this right. Is this what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, anyways, I just think they could have told the story so we know why they're there and how they're supposed to connect. Tell me their story. Like, what's their background? I didn't even know that one lady I had to find. I'm like, finally, I found her. I'm like, oh, she's on Instagram. I don't know who, just tell me who she is up front and tell me why she's influential and I can I draw a connection there. So, whew. Yeah. Good one. Love chatting with you guys. Again, this was a live event for everybody, but it's rare that we do the live broadcast and chat. That's reserved 95% of those. This is what they get to experience all the time um, because they're patron members. And uh, we like to give back to our patron members. So they get these months, like three months before everybody else. Um, they get them live. They get the video. Everybody else gets the podcast, which is free, but it comes out in audio only. You don't get the live chat. You, you have to wait three months and all that kind of stuff. That's one of many benefits, but we always like to do it. We do like, of course, we connect with our regular uh, non-patron audience in other ways through YouTube through the, 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 the uh, podcast comments, the website, through the store. Rick, a lot of you aren't patron members and you buy stuff in the store. Rick and Brian take care of you and all that kind of stuff. So we want to do some of these throughout the year to kind of connect with you a little bit more, but also to give you an idea of what it is like behind the scenes. If you want to get in that private patron uh, troll-free zone, there's no hate in there. We don't allow that. And it's nothing but bikers. There is no stupid question in that private Facebook group. You can be a brand new biker, and that's the environment we want to create. We don't allow that kind of stuff. We don't allow it here on YouTube. We don't allow it in our comments. Um, this is, our, we wrap ourselves around a, a safe environment. There's too much other crap going on online. Um, we want nice environment where it's biker. So you could literally come in and, and ask what you think is the stupidest question in the Facebook group and nobody. In fact, you'll have more members pipe up, happy to help you. Um, because they just want to help you. We know everybody's at a different level of your knowledge. We all started somewhere and I didn't know nothing. And then we move into where you start to know, and I'm still learning daily. And all these people in the private Facebook group, they want to help other bikers. That's what they got in there for. They're setting up their own personal rides um, and meetup events aside from ours. Um, they're connecting with each other. Uh, one of the members is doing a map so you can see where everybody's at. It's an amazing community. Um, it is I think the largest and best biker community on the planet right now. It's what we call the biker revolution. It's what we've been building for eight years now and what we're going to continue to build into the future. So anyways, with that said, that's what we were trying to uh, 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 put this out live to all you guys. And we do appreciate chatting with you and we love chatting with our members and getting to know you better, uh, making a deeper connection, so to speak. And it's so great these days that we can do that online just like this here on a Saturday night. I have to remember what day it is on a Saturday night. Going to you guys worldwide. We're here to help you. We want to just put out great content for you guys. On So uh, head over to the YouTube channel. Hit the podcast up. You want to support us, head over to the store. Some of our videos are premium videos for purchase, of course. Um, and then, yeah, I already said it, the membership part. But uh, coming out with a lot of video content. We filmed another video today. I've got like 10 that are ready. I need to edit and get out, but we're going to keep that nice flow of content for you guys. So uh, there you go. Good times. Thanks, guys. We're out of here.